Hey out there, happy Valentine's Day everybody. Love is beautiful. There's always flowers, chocolates, dates, promises that guys don't intend to keep. But today's Loud House episode has something to do with that. It's like a song in my heart. Speaking of... <clears throat> Love is in the loud house. Love is everywhere. Now let's sing about love. All right, I'm going to stop singing and just get on with this very special Valentine's Day episode from the loud house. L is for love. It is the 23rd episode of season two of the loud house, but overall the 75th episode. There's a bunch of things that are so interesting, and there's a couple of things. Well, only one thing that's wrong about this episode. I'm sure some of you guys already know what it is. But I'm just going to get into the spoiler turf anyway. So this episode begins with Lincoln Loud going to the mailbox. And he suddenly finds an, a letter in the mail. A C is important letter where they call an actual meeting. What's this meeting even about? An actual love letter to somebody. But it's labeled L Loud. I mean, fuck me. It could be any one of them. Because all their names start with L. Well, except for Lori, of course. We already know who she's dating, but I can save that criticism for later on. But that letter could almost be for any one of the others. It could be for Luann, it could be for Lynn, it could be for Lana, it could be for Lola. Wow, I'm actually surprised anyone would actually like Lola. <laughs> Might be for Lucy, maybe even for Lincoln, maybe? Yeah, this is probably the best reason why Lincoln's better off dating this girl than Ronnie Ann. But I could save that one for another time in a different Loud House review episode. Could be for Lisa. Maybe even Lenny. Wow. Just wow is all I can say for Lenny. Oh. She's actually dating a stuffed teddy bear. Yeah, I'm going to say she's way too young to be dating anyway. Maybe even Luna. This is the problem. And to figure out how they're going to know who it's for. Simple. Since the writer is clearly shy, we each need to send a signal to the person we think wrote it, letting them know we're interested. Then, they'll probably send a second letter, giving us more information. Thanks for being the voice of reason, Lucy Loud. I like that. How did, how did you learn that? Vampires send a lot of secret admirer letters. They may be passionate, but they're also painfully insecure. Wow, that's not actually a bad idea. I should actually read that book more often. Is it just me? Or does that book that ho Lucy's holding is kind of a reference of Bella Lugosi? You know, Dracula, 1931. That's a real nice reference. I'm glad they actually mentioned him in the Loud House episode. He was such a famous character for being Dracula. Speaking of, and is it just me or does Lucy's crust look like a character from the Da Vinci Code from Dan Brown's novel? No matter, I actually like that look of him. Yeah, Luann's love interest, Benny. Feels like they named him after a British comedian from Benny Hill. Or at least that is his name, of course. They all but send their signals until Luna Loud actually receives another letter. And it reads... Roses are red. They brighten our town. Like your sweet smile and your hair, which is... Oh. Brown. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Whoa. A brown hair. Someone's a brown hair lover. I wonder which one is it. Is it... Lisa? Lynn, Luann, or maybe even Luna. So much of all the brown hair sisters delivering all their tokens for their affection. Except Luna, thinking that Sam won't even dig her. Now, this Sam character really got me thinking that this guy may not be such a bad person after all. Considering that he is a brown hair, and maybe he just might be interested in Luna. I mean, I don't know. Unless Luna has her eyes on someone else in that group. So Lenny actually got a, got the third letter in the mailbox, thinking that the mailman was actually showing an affection for her, and she turned him down gently. Are you sure you weren't even dropped on your head from birth? Seems a dodo stooped your mother. <laughs> this time the letter says, Dear L 
loud. Here's a third letter, because I'm still feeling skittish. I dig your sweet sounds and love of all things British. Oh, yeah, that's definitely Luna. And the secret lover for, of hers wants to meet her at some kind of rock band kind of restaurant. So you know, the gang is actually there at the restaurant, and Luna doesn't see Sam anywhere. But turns out they actually find both their parents actually at this restaurant together. Why in the hell is the dad wearing the big ass British house party hat in public? It's totally embarrassing. And it turned out the love letter wasn't even for Luna Loud after all. It was for Lynn Loud. Something that him and Rita did when they were real young. When they actually first met, Rita had one wicked crush on the dad. She's a lady. Whoa, 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 she's a lady. Talking about that little lady. And the lady is mine. You could actually be dating Akerbod Crane instead. No offense, but he's got a way with women. He is such a ladies' man. I'm just lucky Rita ain't dating Gaston. So I'm roughly the size of a bird. Oh man, it was Rita cute. Kind of hot looking at the same time. Hey, don't judge me. Even Chara dates are younger men. And here they are right now, celebrating the 20th anniversary of that date. Wow, they have been married for about 20 years. Thanks to that idea, now that all the siblings have much the idea to do it for their secret love admirer. Except for Lori. I mean, Lori had no business being into this. Of course, her being the eldest sister. If she's already got a love interest, why is she even being here with them? I mean, she clearly texts Bobby all the time. Literally. So the gang go off and just deliver their secret love later to their secret love interest. I think a little bit more romantic music would actually fit this than actual rock music. Is very, very extraordinary. Is even more than anyone that you adore can love. Is all that I can give to you. Love is more than just a game for two. Two when love can make it. Take my heart and please don't break it, love. Was made for me and you. Finally, it's Luna's turn. Slipping the slipping the note into Sam's locker, and turns out. See you later, Sam. Okay, see ya. Wait, Sam is a girl. Sam is actually a girl. Holy shit! Luna is actually a lesbian. She actually loves another girl. And I'm scared fucking shitless of it. This even got chills on my spine about that. And I'm sure everybody else has the same feeling as that. So this Valentine's special of the Loud House, Ellis for Love is good, but kind of bad at the same time. Like weird bad. And some people can actually imagine why. Let's talk about the good and the bad stuff about this episode, which I never got a chance to do for any other episode. The good stuff is we get to know so much detail on Lynn and Rita throughout the whole entire episode considering that the whole secret love letter was actually for Lynn Sr. and knowing how the way they met when they were young. Now, if that was the case, if these love letters were all taken and read by all the loud siblings, but Lynn never got them, then how would he even know what Rita is actually up to? Coincidence? Yeah, yeah, th that would actually be a problem. And we get to see so much of the kids' love interest since we already know that Lori's already in love with Bobby, but the rest of the sisters and Lincoln actually have a love interest. And that is where the bad stuff actually comes in at. With Luna Loud. Being in love with another girl and her being a lesbian, which is some people's problem with this episode. Seriously, you have to be a complete idiot to screw up this character. Considering that much people were fans of Luna Loud, they didn't like how she is being a lesbian or in my terms, a bisexual. And what I mean by this bisexual is that she loves both female and male. Point proven, she showed that she also had an attraction to Hugh in an episode called Study Muffin. So many people did not like this episode because of that. I mean, I can't blame them either. Some people may not have a problem with being gay or being a lesbian, but everyone else who was a fan of Luna Loud has a problem with that, even me. Like I said before, I do not like gay people. A man and a woman go together. 
end of story. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Get an actual life. Jesus, what was Chris Savannah even thinking about directing this episode? And he's actually all right with Luna being a lesbian? Dude, you are a total buzzkill. I don't know, Chris was actually the director of the show. I don't know if I can blame the writer from Kevin or even the story people. Much writers and screenplayers are much to be blamed for for when they write a script. Example? <laughs> and one of the writers, Kevin Sullivan, considered this episode to be one of his favorites. I think I can't imagine why. <laughs> Sorry, popcorn stuck in my throat. Many people may not have a problem with that, but let me tell you, a lot of people who watch The Loud House and are Luna Loud fans have a big problem with that and why they hate so much this episode as much as some would hate the show because of that. You know, for being a Loud House Valentine's Day special episode, you kinda can't really finish frosting the cake until you get to the end. That's when you stop and drop the knife when you find out about Luna Loud. But despite the fact that Luna is a bisexual or some of y'all might call her a lesbian throughout part of this episode as she turned out to be in the end of this episode, but everybody else having a love interest, of the opposite of their own sex. I'm gonna give this episode 5 out of 10 stars. I mean, what else? Can you actually blame me? Of course not. You can actually blame someone who actually made this episode. I'm just a Loud House critic who does so much of what I think is my opinion about the episode as much as everybody else about what they thought of the episode as well. That's my part of my job on this one. Now, this ain't saying that it's actually the worst episode. Believe me, there's more than just this episode that is actually the worst out of all the Loud House episodes. I'm the Loud House critic. The sun is shining brightly. Cockadoo, sunny day. Wait, that did not sound right for me. Still need a new catchphrase. I'll figure it out sooner or later. Right now, I got a date with my favorite gal. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Clap this time, may space, may sound